Are you a judgmental person? Do you have a tendency to kind of put your expectations on others as what they should and shouldn't do? Maybe somebody judges you and then you automatically get high and mighty and judge them right back. Well, I'm here today to share with you some reasons why you want to end your judgment habit and how it will make your life so much happier, along with a a bunch of other things like creating miracles in your life. This is Zen in a Moment. It's a podcast where you can learn to train your brain to stop stressing forever and be the cool, awesome person you know you can be. I provide tips and strategies that move you from stressed out to in the flow, in the flow meaning feeling light, open, and wise. I'm your host, Zen Cryer DeBrook, stress as guidance expert. Judgments kill miracles. Okay, what do I mean by that? This is a pretty big topic for me because I found that over the years, my little judgmental self has actually really hindered the law of attraction and miracles showing up in my life. Now, I'm going to share with you a couple of things in relationship to judgment. Number one, just why it's so darned important because it's creating your life, whether you like it or not. When you judge something, you're putting a ball into motion. So there's this theory in quantum physics that talks about how we, when we observe, it's called the observer effect, when we observe particles in the quantum space, they have a tendency to do what we think they're going to do. So if if a scientist is looking at the particles and they think it's going to pop in and out of place, a quark's going to pop in and out of place, then it will do that. It'll just pop in and out of existence. If a scientist believes it's going to be in an orbit, it'll show up as an orbit. If it believes it's going to be doing some sort of chaotic dance, the chaos theory, then it'll be doing a chaotic dance. And the thing is, is that what they're finding is, is that quantum matter, the smallest amount of matter that we can find, actually receives responds to our thought energy put upon it. Well, here's the interesting thing. With the law of attraction, right, your thoughts create your reality. What you put your attention on grows. Well, when you create a judgment about something, some situation, or some person, your mind is making a, what feels like to the universe, a concrete decision. And that is how the universe has to show up. Now, here's what I want to share with you about judgments. Our judgments come from our belief system, and most of the belief systems that we hold in our lives are unconsciously chosen. They've been put upon us by other people, or they've been given to us by the way that our mind has made reason, a reasoning about the universe around us, a, a way of thinking about the way our family reacted to things, the way society reacts to things. So good, bad, and different, all of that comes from our belief system, which we didn't choose. Now, here's the interesting thing. By not choosing your belief system, which then creates judgment, you are just going with the flow, and it may or may not be right for you. Your belief system could be in the way of your life being the happiest that it could be. It could be in the way of you living your life's purpose because how you decide, and a judgment is a decision, how you decide the world has to show up is the way it has to show up. You can't see it any different way. So I want to invite you to look at the places in which you're making a judgment. Judgments show up as should, have to, need to, or must for other people. You can also judge yourself. I'm going to deal with that later. But for now, I want you to look at the should, have to, need to, and musts that you place on your children, on your husband, on your coworkers, on the people around you. Oh, she should be doing this or you shouldn't parent that way, or he should talk to our child in this way, right? Look at the, well, you really need to be doing this in your life. Look at the way that you are creating a judgment, and what's the belief system? You know, most of us, most of us are coming from a heartfelt place when we place our judgment on other people. Now, yes, it also can make us feel high and mighty when we have low self-esteem and when we're not feeling that great about ourselves. We can create judgment on other people to make ourselves feel better. That is one of the things that human beings do. But even then, there's a belief system underneath it. So what I want to encourage you to do is to pay attention to the need, have to, musts, and shoulds that you're placing on the people that you love, the people in the world around you, and go, why? Why do I believe that, that they need to be this way, or they need to dress this way, or they need to get up earlier? Why do I believe that they should be eating better? Why do I believe that they should be taking on more in their life or taking on less in their life? What is the belief system underneath that? And then you look at your internal guidance system. Now, if you don't know what your internal guidance system is, as you'll hear me say every, t- every podcast, go to zeninamoment.com. 
and there you will find a video that explains that you came with a factory installed guidance system that you can physically feel. I'm going to walk you through a quick exercise in that video that lets you feel it for yourself and then you'll understand what I mean by opening and closing. But most of the time our judgments are closing. That means what we're thinking is not true for ourselves or the other person or what we're thinking about it them is not going to happen. Not true, not going to happen. That's really important information because that means that we're putting something on them that's, that, that isn't right for them. We're, in, we're trying to push our false belief system, because it's closing, means it's not true for us either, on someone else. Now here's the other thing that's really, really crucial, especially if you're a parent, especially if you're in a long-term relationship. When I said judgments kill miracles, here's what I mean. Remember that quantum mater material that I was just talking about? When you make a decision about another human being by placing judgment on them, you set in motion a self-fulfilling prophecy that only allows them to show up in that particular way. It's, it's actually like no matter what else they do, no matter what other information, no matter how else they talk or how else they behave, no matter what happens, the, the, there's a way in which your mind only cultivates seeing them in this limited, minuscule way. The miracle of who they are, of being able to have choice and being able to transition and transform and change becomes lost. Now, I want you to think about it for a second. When you go home for the holidays, does it, do you ever run into anybody who sees you as your old self? Has anybody from your history at all kind of looked at you and treated you as a past version of yourself? a version of yourself that may not be as enlightened and marvelous and wonderful as you are today, like all of your self-growth and personal development gets thrown out the window and this person can't see that, and then somehow you are tripping through the experience of being in their presence, and as you're tripping through the experience of being in their presence, you actually show up the way they're, they're talking about you being. It's like you, you revert back to a, a younger version of yourself that you're not happy with. That is a judgment that's killing a miracle. It doesn't feel good. It's miserable. It's a miserable place to live. We do it to ourselves too, but, but we don't wanna do this to others. So what you do is you look at, if it's closing you, the should, have to, need to, and must about the people that you love in your life or the people that are around you. Facebook is a great place to find should, have to, meet, need to, and must nowadays of what other people should be thinking, feeling, being, and doing in that, we close down our availability to the divine. And this oppor opportunity of finding that closing, looking at the belief below it, and saying, that's not true. That person shouldn't be doing that. Just that will open you. You'll feel the lightness, the ease happen in your body. And in that moment of openness and ease from that thought, a miracle is being born inside of you. I'm not kidding. This is a very, very powerful, powerful process that you can use to unravel and untangle extraordinary, amazing experiences with the people in your life. All right, so this is Zen in a Moment. I'm your host, Zen Cryer DeBrook, and I am so grateful to have you listening to these podcasts. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. I have a Facebook group that you can sign up for on our website, zeninamoment.com, where you can communicate with me. I would love, love, love it if you would share these with anybody that you think might get some a nugget of truth and power out of them. I look forward to hopefully speaking with and communicating with you someday. And until that happens, I am sending you love and blessings.